Our message tonight is how far are we from home? That is our message tonight. How far are we from home? Surely this has been the question of millions of people all down the ages. How far are we from home? You see, people around the world are tired. All over the world. They are tired of what is happening around in the world. They are tired of what they have been experiencing here and there around the world. They are tired of the negative experiences they have gone through. And they are eagerly waiting for the day they will be home. How far are we from home? Let's pray. Father God, this is our topic tonight. And we can't without you. We cannot even meditate effectively and intelligently without you. We cannot even talk this subject in the manner that it will touch our souls without you. We depend on you to do the work. Father, touch my brain tonight. Touch my mouth tonight. Touch my tongue tonight. Touch my vocabulary tonight. Speak to me as I speak to your people. Father, the presence of the Holy Spirit is highly demanded in this place father thank you for the people who are continuing to come i know there is somebody out there who upon listening to the word of god tonight somebody will never be the same again therefore draw somebody from somewhere young and old to come and as they come father i will want to thank you because surely they become worthy candidates of the kingdom of heaven so speak to all of us here tonight make us channels of blessing even as we listen to this word of god tonight send your word and heal someone someone has come here tonight Someone is here who has just come to listen to the word of God. But I see there is a, a, a somebody here who need healing. And surely wherever the word of God is being presented and preached. And wherever your presence is. There is a miracle happening in somebody's body. In somebody's life. In somebody's experience. So send your word here tonight and bring healing spiritual healing physical healing financial healing academic healing professional healing emotional healing send your way tonight and bring salvation and hope through the power of your word in jesus name amen how far are we from home our planet, our planet has undergone four stages. I want you to listen to this. Our planet Earth has undergone four stages. Number one stage is uh, perfect creation. When this world came from the hand of God, 
It was powerful and perfect. Perfect in all aspect, aspects. Every aspect was perfect. Even Adam and Eve, the man and woman who were created in the beginning, were a crowning act of God's creation. Climax of God's creation. Therefore, perfect creation. Everything was perfect. Even the man and the woman who was created were perfect in all aspects. Created in the image and the likeness of God. That was in stage number one. Our planet has undergone. Number two, the day when sin entered our planet. Every kind of communication, effective communication had been made. And every kind of uh, information has been given to our first parents. They were not left in ignorance. God made sure that he told them about what had happened in one of the created beings in heaven who had fallen. And that, that being could come at any time and deceive them. And they were given all information. Every day and every day, every morning, every evening, God had communicated with these people. He himself and even sending the angels to tell them that if they overcome the test, they will be completely liberated from all possibilities of sinning and falling. But one day, if ignorantly fell, ignorantly, but Adam, the man, knowingly fell. Eve met this evil being somewhere. And somehow, innocently and ignorantly, she ate the fruit. But later, she takes this fruit to the husband and said, I have eaten. And it is sweet. And Adam was shocked. Have you eaten? Are you telling me you have eaten? Finally, Adam, knowingly what had happened and what will happen, ate. Knowingly. So, when heaven, the information was known throughout the universe, all heaven wept. Because they knew the consequences. Even God himself wept. Even crying and saying, how can I give you up, Adam? How can I let you go, Adam? God wept. Angels wept. I want you to know that all heaven, all the inhabitants of heaven, are interested in your salvation. They are interested in your happiness. They are interested in your well-being. That was the second stage. The day of doom. The day of sorrow for the whole universe when sin entered our planet. Number three stage is the long history. The long history of immorality and the wickedness and the loneliness and the pain 
el disorro long history of sickness of doom in our planet long history it has been years of terrorism years of hijacking years full of fear years of full of death separations from loved ones years full of sorrow long history that is the third stage but the last stage restoration restoration of paradise restoration of perfect creation perfect planet restoration where every promise that god has ever made concerning this rest restoration will be fulfilled you find it in the book of second peter second peter chapter 3 verse 9 and verse 13 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should ever perish but that all should come to repentance Nevertheless, verse 13, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. What he promise? God will have to fulfill fully his word. Perfect creation. Perfect universe perfect planet where sin will never dwell in revelation chapter 21 verse 1 verse 4 and 5 now i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away also there was no more sea verse 4 and god will wipe away every tear from their eyes there shall be no more death no more sorrow no more crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away verse 5 then he who sat on the throne said behold i make all things new perfect creation perfect universe where sin shall never be found no more pain no more sorrow no more crying no more mourning no more separations new earth new heavens john chapter 14 verse 1 to 3 chapter 14 verse 1 and 3 john let not your hearts be troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house there are many mentions if we to if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go to prepare for you a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also what a powerful promise a planet free 
from fear no more fear no more fear of hijacking no more fear of terrorism no more fear of violence no more fear of death no more sorrow no more pain no more sickness no more no more no more no more no more loneliness no more unhappiness no more hunger a planet that will be completely liberated liberated and set free from all these things but the question is when when will this be when will this happen how far are we from this powerful restoration powerful restoration powerful restoration how far are we people innocent people here and there are asking wishfully asking when will this be now you are not alone who have been asking this question the question has been raised here and there in almost every generation in the book of matthew chapter 24 verse 3 now as jesus was sitting on mount of olives the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age when they were concerned they were also curious of knowing when they were also curious in knowing when it will happen when will it happen we are eagerly waiting for the day but when will it happen how shall we know how shall we know the sign of your coming how shall we know the sign of that now it is almost we are almost home how shall we know that we are almost there how shall we know they were curiously asking jesus now tonight I have discussed with you four stages our planet has undergone. Now I want to discuss with you four signs. Four signs that will indicate to us that we are almost there. Four signs. Four signs. And we wanted to find them from the word of God. Four signs that the word of God has given us. That will show to us that we are almost there. Because God does not want to take us by surprise. We are not to be taken by surprise. Intelligent people know for sure from the word of God. That God has always revealed it to us through down the ages concerning us he is so much interested in us that he does not want us to be taken by surprise he wants those who are intelligent those who really are serious concerning their salvation not to be taken by surprise he wants us to know when that we may know when so that we may be readily prepared for signs number one sign is a global
calamities global calamities worldwide worldwide calamities calamities that will happen globally all over the world here and there what does the bible say in the book of matthew chapter 24 verse 6 to 8 Jesus talks about this. He tells us about it. Verse 6 to 8. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences. And earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. You will hear, Jesus says. Of the wars and rumors of war. For nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against the kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes. In various places. And when you see these things. No. No. That you are almost home. You should not be troubled. Just know. In fact, in Luke chapter 21. Jesus asked something here. Verse 28. Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen. Listen to this. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heart, heads. Lift up your heads. Because your redemption draws near. When these things begin to happen, and the world has witnessed wars and rumors of wars, and witnessed people going hungry here and there around the world. If you have never experienced hunger, I want you to know there are millions out there. Out there. People who do not remember when they ate the food and they said it is enough. Millions. Around the world. Today. In our generation. People who don't know when they ever ate the last meal. When, which was adequate enough. They only eat sparingly. Sparingly. And sometimes they eat just half a meal per day. Not because they want. But because there is nothing. And there are millions who do not know where they will get the next meal. When they eat one meal, they don't know when they will get the next one. Millions. Wars. Rumors of wars. People living lives of fear and confusion they don't know what the future is holding fear the rich and the poor the politicians all over the world 
live lives of fear, uncertainty, and confusion. Scientists all over the world, they do not know what to do because fear is filling their hearts concerning what the future holds. But those who know the Lord have nothing to fear. But those who know the Lord have nothing to fear. Let me tell you, those who know the Lord have nothing to fear. Because already they have been told by Jesus not to worry, not to fear, not to be troubled in their hearts because they already know that this is an indicator of the second coming. In fact, in um, Daniel chapter 11, Listen to what Daniel chapter 11 is saying up. He's saying here. Verse 32. Those who do those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. But the people who know they are God at such a time as this, they will be stronger and stronger and they will do great exploits. They will do great things. Because they know they are God. When they see these, these things, they become more and more excited. When they see these things, they become more and more excited. They are busy evangelizing, telling people that these are the signs which you already tell us we are almost home. Global calamities. Number two sign. Is global moral declension. Global moral decline. Moral decay. Globally. Moral declension. Moral decay. As you say, but pastor. What do you mean by moral declension? Moral decay? What do you mean? Is one of the signs that we are almost home. What does that mean? In Second Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Second Timothy. 3, verse 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self control, brutal despisers of good traitors headstrong haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying the power of godliness 
moral declaration moral decay globally here the bible tells us that just you know this that in the last days these things will happen more than 15 things you can count to them more than 15 people who will love themselves more than they love god you know the bible tells us that we if we are to be saved we must love god with all our hearts with all our souls with all our minds with all our strength with all our mental i mean we have to love god with all our strength and all our energies and all our minds but these love themselves if you want to be a candidate of the kingdom you must love god and then you must love your neighbor as yourself now these bible verses tell us about how people will go down 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 no more love for each other no, no, no more love for one another in fact it begins not from out to there it begins down in the church where people don't love each other people have no love the greatest indicator that you love people is evangelism you want it to be in the kingdom and you want everybody around you to be in the kingdom with you that is an indication that you have understood the meaning and the power of love you love god so much and you love somebody and you love god so much and because god is love you want also to be to have the character of god in your life you love god and you love fellow men you want everyone you meet to know that you are a candidate of the kingdom and you want somebody else to be a candidate of the kingdom and you show them the way you show them the way you look for every opportunity to assist somebody one of the young people here told me she's looking for a personal friend of hers also to be baptized she's eagerly longing that she does not only to be does not also only want to be baptized but she's looking for a personal friend of hers also to make the same decision that is what love is all about you begin to love others but you want to do good to everybody now here the bible says that in the last days people will love themselves they will also be disobedient you see if you are disobedient disobedient to god you cannot obey anyone down here we begin to be obedient to god if we are to be obedient to those who are who are who have more have lived more years than you do you can never respect anybody down here if you are not respecting god we begin respecting god and it is god himself who will help you to respect others we begin with god it all starts with god immediately you fall in love with jesus he will help you to fall in love with those around you from your parents and those who are more senior than you are and thank you you cannot be thankful to anybody if you are not thankful to god we know god is the one who has provided you everything now when you are thankful to him every morning you wake up you begin to consider what god has done in your life 
you begin to think and to thank him and thank him for the gift of life to think to thank you thank him for the friends you have the contacts you have the connections that you have god has given you friends here and there who have made your life to be better and better he has given you friends he has given you men and women around you who have been so kind and so generous to you you begin to thank him for what he has done by giving you the right networks the right connections you have the right people around you you have the right people you begin to say who do i have people who have made a difference in my life and you begin to thank god for them then you can come back and begin to thank them one by one now the bible tells us these people in the last days don't you know how to thank anyone surely they don't you know because they have not been thanking god how can they thank any anybody how can they appreciate anybody when they have not appreciated god the fact that you are here today you are alive today it is only the grace of god moral decay moral declaration now number four and number three and four are powerful positive signs that we are almost home very powerful and positive number three is global civilization global civilization global worldwide civilization is one of the signs that we are almost there global civilization i want you to read with me the book of daniel chapter 12 Daniel chapter 12 some of you are writing this powerful bible text that I'm sharing with you God bless you Daniel chapter 12 the bible tells us in verse 4 but you Daniel shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and the knowledge shall increase but you daniel shut up the, book, the words and seal the book until the time of the end many shall run to and fro and the knowledge shall increase you see number one it says running to and fro you know just these last 10 days i was traveling and uh, i happened to be in four major centers of traveling i came from dar es salaam or oh, at the airport there i met hundreds and hundreds of people people i will never see again i may never see, see them again because they are traveling to every corner of the world and they were there at the airport some waiting for the airplanes to europe some to asia some to africa different countries of africa and all over and within 38 hours I was in Doha in Saudi Arabia the Middle East and Doha there is amazing I mean thousands of aircrafts are leaving that airport to all parts of the world every single day and you meet people there and you just wonder as you read this prophecy that was written 
2,600 years ago. And you see how it has been powerfully fulfilled. And from there, I flew to New York. Now, New York is a confusion. It's a global center of traveling. People from there, I mean New York, New York, for those of you who have been in New York, know what I'm, I, I'm telling, talking about. People are traveling from there to all over the cities and the towns of the United States. People there are traveling to every center of the world, to many cities of the world. The whole world is almost centered in New York. People traveling everywhere. Now from there, I flew to Phoenix, Arizona. And Arizona is also just as powerful. Now, the Bible tells us that Daniel, in the last days, people will run to and fro. And the knowledge shall increase. Now you talk of knowledge. You hold your small phone, telephone. Someone was pulling me and he said, you said you are preaching is in the YouTube. How can I get it? I just typed it there. Harry Muhando, the YouTube. And all the same ones that I'm preaching here came. Right there. And she began to listen to me. And this is what is happening all over the world. People are listening to my preaching. Right here as I preach. They are listening everywhere in Tanzania. They see me live here. They listen to my preaching. In Kenya, in everywhere, in South America, in Asia. They look, they see me here in Phoenix, Arizona, preaching right now as I preach. Through YouTube and the other networks. Powerful. Knowledge shall increase. Knowledge. Now knowledge shall increase. In the last days. Positive, positive signs of the second coming of Jesus in our generation. And so many other things for the increase of knowledge. And we thank God for the increase of knowledge. Some of the things concerning the increase of knowledge might be negative. To those who want it to be negative. To those who want it to be evil. To those who want it to walk with the devil. But for those who have made up their minds to walk with Jesus, the increase of knowledge is an advantage. We can communicate the word of God to people all over the world through the increase of knowledge. Now for the wicked people, they will continue to grow wicked and wicked. But for those of us who have made up our minds to be eternal candidates of the kingdom of heaven, the increase of knowledge is an advantage. One of the signs, Jesus is coming again. Now finally, one of the signs is global proclamation of the word of God. Globally. Global proclamation of the gospel. Global proclamation of the good news. Is one of the signs of the second coming of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, And verse 14. You will find it there. The word of God tells us. And this gospel of the kingdom. Will be preached in all the world. As a witness to all the nations. And then. The end. Will come. This gospel of the kingdom. Will be preached. Everywhere globally. And then the end will come. You know, let me tell you. Even my coming here is one of the fulfillment of the signs. I am not here by accident. I am not here by accident. 
You know, let me tell you, this is an advantage to the city of Arizona. This is an advantage to the people of Arizona. This is an advantage to the, to the, to, 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 to the inhabitants and to the members of the church of Arizona because this is an advantage for you to just tell somebody, someone has come all the way from Africa. I don't know what kind of message he has, but just come and listen to him and you will never be the same again. You know, someone may not listen to you who live in Arizona, but he could listen to someone who has come far from far away. So this is an advantage to the people and the believers in Arizona. You can just tell someone, you see, I have heard, I have heard, or that someone has come, a preacher has come from all the way from Tanzania, all the, all the way from Eastern Africa, and he is here in the city. We don't know what message he has, but we are told that he is a preacher. He is a preacher of good news. He is a preacher of salvation. Come with me, and you may never again be the same again. You have been listening to the preachers here. We have been listening to the preachers here. Many preachers have come here from our country. Now this one has come from far. He might have something that you listening to the word he is going to preach. Your life might be transformed forever. The proclamation of the good news is one of the signs that Jesus is coming again. What an advantage for the people of Arizona. What an advantage for the people of Phoenix. What an advantage to the Christians in Arizona. Of all colors, colored, blacks and everybody. That the good news will be preached. You might have tried to invite people to come to preach to the black preachers of America and people did not come you might have tried to invite somebody to come to listen to the white preachers of America that person will have not been able to come now you have an advantage to listen to a black preacher from the black a black man from the black country Maybe by somebody being introduced that now a, a visitor has come from far, a black man from the black continent. That person may say, now I am going to listen to the black man from the black, black continent. And by his coming here, he may never be the same again. Quite an advantage is one of the signs that Jesus is coming and in the kingdom of heaven someone will testify and will tell Jesus I did not go to the white preachers of America I did not even go to the black preachers of America but when I was told when I was told that a, a black man from the black continent has come, I said to myself, let me go. Maybe the Holy Spirit will touch my life forever. One of the good news, Jesus is coming again. That the good news of the kingdom will be preached. Now, the question is, Jesus is coming again soon and very soon. Are you ready? I was impressed when some of the girls who are here tonight, they have made a plan on Sunday that they will go without food to pray for me. They will be fasting the whole day. They are seven, I am told, in number. You know, the other day we mentioned about having a prayer partner, having prayer partners. 
these girls have united seven of them and they have made intentionally intentionally made an agreement with God that on Sunday they will not eat the whole day not even drink just to pray for me and praying for their fellow girls to make a decision for Jesus what a powerful decision what an attempt part of the powerful preparation to meet Jesus they'll be fasting praying for her mano praying for themselves making a powerful intentional intentional strategy to win their fellow friends to make a decision to be baptized let me tell you that is one of the preparations to meet Jesus but let me also tell you something that if you want to be intelligently prepared be connected be vitally connected with God every day it's not a once and for all issue it is a daily preparation a daily preparation is needed you need before you go to bed you have to make an agreement with Jesus at what time in the morning do you want to wake up you have to make up your mind that I will wake up at such a time and spend at least one hour one hour one hour alone you know it is very important very vital to be connected you have to have a place of prayer you have to have a place of prayer and you have to have a time to pray when your mind your mind is ready to listen to the word of God it is a daily preparation you need you need to be shielded by Jesus remember Jesus is in you and you must be in Jesus to be protected from the powers of evil to be vitally pre prepared now let me uh, now ask you how many of you say pastor I now know that Jesus is coming soon and I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready and I want Jesus to help me to be ready every single day of my life. I want Jesus to help me to be ready every single day of my life from now until Jesus comes. If that is your decision, raise up your hand. Let's just raise up your hand. Oh God bless you. God bless you. Will you stand up? Will you stand up? Will you stand up? Now let me congratulate all of you for standing up. Now this is a time of decision. We have a big baptism on Saturday. Big baptism on Saturday. Big baptism on Saturday. And many people here have already made the decision to be baptized. And I can see tonight there are others who wanted to register for this baptism. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, it's a moment of decision. It's a moment of decision. It's a moment to make intelligible decision. Father, my prayer is full of thanksgiving for what has been happening here. Because there are men and women here, and young and old here, who have already made the decision to be baptized on Saturday. And Father, it is my prayer tonight, as I make this appeal, many, many more will make a decision to be baptized. Now, as every eye is closed, you say, Pastor, I have not yet made, I have not yet registered my name to be baptized. But tonight, 
I want it, my name also to be included among those who will be baptized. If that is your decision, just raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand. Oh, God bless you. Now, I will ask Pastor Joel to come here. And Pastor um, um, Patrick to come here. And their wives to come here as well. Their wives to be here. And I want to invite all those people who have already made decision yesterday and day before yesterday to be baptized. I want all of you to come here. And those who are making this decision for the first time to come here and shake the hands of these pastors. Those who have already registered, I want you to come. And those who are registering tonight, I want you also to come and stand with these pastors. Come, come. Come and shake the hands of the pastors. Come. Come and shake the hands. Come and stand with the pastors. You have already made a decision yesterday and the day before yesterday and tonight you are making this decision and you say I don't want to miss that baptism. I want to be baptized as well with my friends. I want to be baptized with them. Come and stand with the pastors. Come. Mrs. Pastor, come and stand with them as well. Come and stand with them. Come and stand with them. And just encourage them for the decision they are making. Come, pastor, the wives of pastors, come and stand with them as well. And shake their hands. Shake their hands. Shake their hands. Shake their hands. Oh, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Oh, yes. I've seen someone who is already 11 years of age and is making the city to be baptized. My daughter, let me tell you, one of my daughters, one of my daughters, who is now a pastor's wife, Amen. was baptized at the age of 11. Amen. At the age of 11, at one of the meetings like this, one preacher was preaching and she made her mind, she did not even consult me. She said, ah, I am, and I found her standing like some of these standing here. Amen. At the age of 11. Very intelligent girl. And now she is a pastor's wife. Oh, how I pray that these ones who are making this decision, some of them will become pastor's wives as well. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Now, we have, this is another moment of prayer. We need to pray. Someone here is in need of prayer. I have seen students here. Students here. We wanted to pray for you. We want to pray for you that from tonight you will be number one. From tonight you will be number one. Academically, your teachers will begin to see your intelligence has changed. Your brain has changed. Mentally you have changed. Intellectually you have changed. But we wanted to pray for those who are sick. If you are sick, you have not been feeling well for some time, that the Lord will heal you tonight. That the Lord will heal you tonight. That the Lord will heal you tonight. But if you have a loved one who is sick, the Lord will touch that someone, wherever that someone is. If you need those kind of prayers, come and join with us here. If you are looking for a better job, come and just come Come and, uh, and stand with the pastors here. Amen. Come and stand with the pastors. Come. If you are looking for powerful employment, powerful business, and for those young people who want to become intelligent, come and stand with the pastors here. Amen. Come. 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 Now, I will ask again my friend uh, Joel, Pastor Joel, to come and pray for all of us. Also pray for me. Also pray for me. Pray for my, my family. Pray for me. And pray for all these people that everyone will receive their miracles tonight. Shall we kneel down? Those of you who can kneel. If you can't, you can sit where you want. We thank you God for the miracle. The miracle of change. The miracle of listening. The miracle of accepting and the miracle of giving and surrendering our hearts to Jesus Christ. 
We thank you, Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit who is working now in our meetings, and we can feel his presence with us tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the home that you are preparing for us. And we are just very close, because very soon and very soon, we will be able to hear the voice saying that it is finished. And before it is finished, you have given us a chance to think about our own, our lives. To think how it will be when you say it is finished. Yes. And Lord, thank you for the decision you have made tonight to choose to hate sin and to love Jesus Christ. To invite him in our hearts because to be in us, it is all what we need tonight. I want to thank you, Lord, for this young men and women who gave their life to Jesus Christ and they want to be baptized. I know that the devil is fighting, but in the name of Jesus Christ, he has completely, he has completely fallen and he doesn't have power on them. I pray that you will give them blessings, you will, you will touch their hearts and all their desires will be fulfilled because they have welcomed Jesus Christ. I pray that for those who are sick, O oh Lord, you touch them. Amen. Touch them with your hand. Give them a true medication. The blood of Jesus Christ is able to transform our health, is able to give us a good health, is able to give us a healing, eternal healing. I praise you, Lord. I pray for those who are going to school to give them wisdom, to give, to be intelligent, to be able Lord, to know that the time we are living now, it is not a good time. May they, they know how to assess and to know what is good and what is evil. And to choose Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord. Oh God, tonight, I want to thank you for Pastor Mohando. Yes, for this night and days has been talking to us. Continue to give him strength he needs. Bless his wife. Bless his children. Bless his ministry as he ministered to each one of us. As he traveled countries and all over the world. May you be with him as well. Oh Lord, we thank you for the mighty things you have completely seen in our lives. Will continue to happen because we will never give up. And our decision is that we will never the same again. Bless us tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for what you've done for us. Amen. I thank you for the prayer that my friend, Pastor Joel, has spoken to you about. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you. Bless us tonight. Bless Amen. us as we go home. Every one of us has received a miracle. Amen. Every one of us, those of us who are sick, Lord, tonight, 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 even when they go to sleep, the minister, the heavenly minister will be sent to them. An angel of healing will be sent to them. Amen. The electric current of heaven will go through their bodies. Father, we want by the end of this week, someone here will make a testimony. Mm. And he say, I was sick, but when I attended the evangelistic meeting, my life is changed. My health is changed. My attitude is changed. My mentality is changed. But I am healed in Jesus' name. Amen. But we shall give you all the honor and the glory. Amen. I am praying for the young people who are here, Lord. Amen. From now, to, from tonight, they are never to be the same again. Bless their minds. Bless their brains. Bless them as they go to school. Father, even tomorrow, mm. from tomorrow onwards, let them be number one, Amen. number one, mm. number one, until the, all the teachers will be surprised and they will say, what has happened? For them, they will say, Jesus is the answer. Amen. So bless all of us. Yes. And for those who are going to be baptized, bless them. Amen. Bless this congregation in a mighty way. Mm. That tomorrow, tomorrow night, they will be busy bringing their friends here. Amen. And when they come here, they will make the same decision. Amen. In Jesus' name, let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Amen.